All right, good morning. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I think is some more evidence of this transfer case behavior. Um, so we've got the car in two-wheel drive. All right, it's in park, start her up. Lights flashing, it will go solid. And I'll put it back to two-wheel drive, but it'll stay flashing. So now we're gonna jack it up and spin the front diff and see what happens. All right. Car's in park, wheels are on the ground, lights are flashing, it's in two-wheel drive. All right, let's pack it up. Oh. All right, my sleeves fell down. I can't stand my sleeves over my elbows. Note the wheel just spun then. See that? Like the diff was all loaded up. Still flashing. Hmm. There we go, that did it. So what happened then was I had to actually provide some drive input into the transfer case from the gearbox. But yeah, we're in the air, wheels are spinning. Let's see if it goes back into four wheel drive. Oh, sorry, wrong way. Yep, put it back into two-wheel drive, put it into reverse briefly, yep, there you go. So it's an issue with wheel sizes or that pin being jammed up um, and the pin not freeing up properly. Weird, I mean the engage, the actuator rod, All right? The one down there in the diff, which you probably can't see. All right, moving on. Righto, folks. I've diagnosed everything to do with this fucking four-wheel drive system. And it has all come down to the actuator rod and the vacuum lines, lines uh, that supply it. <clears throat> so people say things like, your car will default to four-wheel drive. That is correct. In the absence of any vacuum commands coming to this diaphragm here then this rod will stick out let me show i've disconnected um the vacuum lines well at least i've removed the vacuum look at the behavior of this rod you see how it goes in but comes out straight away let me zoom in just in case you can't see that all right you push it in it comes out and out is four wheel drive which basically means that the drive shaft coming into here, oops, wrong way, that the drive shaft, the drive shaft coming into the diff will engage the pinion and the ring gear and the diff will be active. That is the default. So if you're ever stuck and everything fucking goes to shit and totally fails, the car will go into four wheel drive and it'll engage this. After that, you can just mechanically engage the front uh, drive shaft of the transfer case by putting it into one of the four-wheel drive modes. The rest of it should be tickety-boo. Now, the problem I've got, as it turns out, is that the four-wheel drive engagement vacuum hose is not being driven. So I measured the vacuum on this line, and it is... It's this line here. Hoping you can see that. This one here going into the side of the diaphragm is the one that which, pull, which forces it closed against spring pressure. So it's vacuum pulling it this way. The other one is this hose right there at the tip of my finger, which pulls it out. So even though it's spring default, 
the vacuum is assisting that rod, either pushing it in, which it needs to anyway, because it's spring loaded to come out, or assisting in removing it. If the vacuum signal on the two wheel drive side is misbehaving, it'll have a hard time getting in and out of four wheel drive because the rod pushing it in probably still has pressure holding it in, right? So it's not that the fact that um, this actuator rod is jammed up, it's that the vacuum signal is wonky. And it does appear to be that way in that um, the, I monitored via my little vacuum gauge over there, a little connector which goes into the hoses. When the two wheel drive vacuum signal was coming to the actuator rod and a lot of the time it was like massively delayed, it like it wasn't coming on. So I think what that means is the solenoid up in the engine bay, which drives this system is sticky. Now here's the tricky part. The solenoids, I've just unbolted them, are here in this mess of wires. Uh, this gets really hot, this whole gas assembly, so I actually need to let the car cool down. Um, and then I'm gonna pull these out and check those solenoids to see if they're getting, if they're sticky. So, Let's talk about what this owner said about his car. And the owner said, I never, ever, ever put it in four wheel drive. Now, what do you think happens to a 23 year old solenoid that never got actuated? <laughs> um, yeah. So sticky solenoids is probably what we're dealing with here. And all that, caused all the drama with me not being able to get this thing into gear, even after I fixed that bloody lever ball. So the next video update, or the next section of the video, will hopefully be me driving around saying, look, it's all fixed. Oh, no, I'll actually make some videos of the solenoid if the solenoid's got stuff in it. <laughs>